Chem 2045's Exam 1, Fall 2009, number 23. Consider the following reaction. Two A's and a B will yield three C's and a D. If you have 3.0 moles of A and 2.0 moles of B react to form uh, 4.0 moles of C, what is the percent yield of the reaction? So percent yield is... Um, let's talk about this. Percent yield. We, we have an intuitive idea of what percent yield is. I'm not just going to throw up an equation just yet. I want us to think about this. What's everybody's favorite dessert? Mine included. Fried cheesecake. Especially from chopsticks. Delicious. So, what does it take to make fried cheesecake? Well, you need cheesecake, of course. Cheese. Cake. And... You need one cheesecake, and then you need one fry, of course, like oil. And what do you get? You get one deliciousness, we'll say. One great dessert. So, the thing is, though, what if I have ten cheesecakes, and I have, you know, ten fry available, um, and during the process, I, like, actually drop a cheesecake, um, and... Uh, I spill some of my fry, and so ultimately I only produce, I only produce eight desserts. Even though, having started out with ten of these and ten of those, I could have made potentially ten desserts, right? So what was my percent yield of that reaction, of my delicious dessert making? Uh, it was eighty percent. I only got eighty percent yield. So essentially, the eight desserts that I actually got divided by the ten desserts I could have made. Theoretically, gives me percent yield. So, you know, we that that makes sense, right? So percent yield is your actual divided by your theor theoretical. And then if you want to turn it into a percent, you just multiply it by 100%. And again, why why did the actual not equal the theoretical, because I maybe messed up somewhere, maybe one of the fried cheesecakes sadly got burnt, or something like that. So, that's why actual is less than theoretical. Let's apply it to this real chemistry problem. Um, theoretically, what could I make if I had 3.0 moles of A and 2.0 moles of B? This is not my theoretical yield, this is actually what I made, so that's going to go on the top of my percent yield equation. So for this reaction, I actually made 4.0 moles of C. Now the next step is to find out, theoretically, how many I could have made, based on what I have. Which one of these will run out first? Will one of them run out? Maybe I don't have a perfect enough quantity of these to use them up both at the same time. So I have currently 3.0 moles of A. So this is, this is how much I have. Uh, all right, and then how, how much B could I, or how much B do I need in order to use all this A? Well, since it, they appear in a two to one ratio, say I had two moles of A, I would theoretically need just one mole of B to use it up. I'm going to carry that ratio down, 2 moles of A to 1 mole B. Moles A cancel, I'm left with 3 halves moles of B. This is the theoretical amount, how much B, how much B, B required, or would be needed, in order to react away all my A. Now the question comes, do I have this much? Fill up my two. Yes, I do. I have way, I have plenty of B. So, right, because two is bigger than 1.5. So, yes, I do have enough B. So, my A is going to go completely away. And that's, that's why we just did that, is to conclude that A is the limiting reagent.
17 ratio. So we're going to start with our A, 3.0 moles of A. Now we know that that's going to run out first. And we're going to convert to C. How much could we theoretically make? So for every 2 moles of A, I have 3 moles of C. Moles A cancel. I'm left with 9 halves moles of C. That amount is going to go down on the bottom here in the theoretical spot. Multiply by 100%. For those of you afraid of fractions, don't be. 2 comes up to the top, makes 8 ninths. Mole C cancel, mole C cancel. I just multiply that by 100%. And I get 89% yield. Not too bad for chemistry.